Uh, this lecture is the last of the three uh, of the metallic chemistry uh, video lectures uh, and the last one in this term. Uh, in this lecture, we're going to discuss um, chemical reactions that are unique to organometallic compounds and catalytic cycles uh, using organometallic catalysts. Uh, the required reading is uh, in chapter 14. Uh, we're going to go over a uh, couple of reactions uh, that are uh, specific to organometallic compounds, including oxidative addition, reductive elimination, uh, 1 1 and 1 2 insertion, as well as beta elimination. Uh, we can then uh, look at three different catalytic cycles that uh, are based on um, those kind of reactions. And before we uh, start to discuss those um, new chemistry, I want to emphasize that uh, everything we have learned from coordination chemistry as well as organic chemistry, in general, they still apply to organometallic compounds. Um, examples are ligand dissociation reaction, lig ligand exchange, uh, and specifically for um, OH type of uh, complexes, the dissociation uh, mechanism still dominates uh, ligand exchange reaction. Uh, there are also reactions that happen on the ligands or um, that are more uh, kind of mimicking the traditional uh, kind of chemistry we already know. For example, nucleophilic attack. Uh, we're not going to discuss those and instead we're going to look at uh, reaction types that are more unique uh, to coordinate uh, to augmentalic compounds. All right, uh, the first uh, two types of reaction are uh, oxidative addition and reductive elimination. Those are uh, essentially uh, the same kind of process, uh, but in different direction. Okay, so uh, looking at the equation shown on the top, uh, you see there's an augmentalic complex and it reacts with another uh, ligand. And this ligand originally uh, was bonded through a covalent bond. And in the oxidative addition process, uh, the bond between X and Y was broken, it's broken and both X and Y add onto the metal center. Uh, the net result of this process is that uh, the oxidation state of metal uh, not, um, increases by 2 and if you count the number of electrons um, uh, in the complex, the total number of valence charge electrons increase by 2. Uh, that's why it's called oxidative addition because it involves oxidation of the metal center and also it involves additional uh, ligands added to the complex. Reductive elimination would be the reverse process and that is the um, two ligands on the metal uh, break away from the metal and they form um, a covalent bond between themselves. So formally you can view this as uh, uh, increase or decrease of two X type of ligands. So if you think about the, uh, the LXZ type of uh, designation, uh, in this case, the new ligand X and Y are both uh, X type ligands. Um, in terms of electron counting, uh, the most likely uh, converting in this case is uh, uh, 18 electron uh, complex, um, typically ML6 type of complex, uh, undergo reductive elimination uh, to produce an ML4 complex that has 16 electrons. Uh, on the bottom uh, shows uh, a couple of examples. This is a iridium complex, uh, originally has an oxidation state of 1. It can undergo a number of uh, oxidative addition processes. Um, with hydrogen, with methyl bromide, with HI, and uh, depending on the uh, reagent, it produces different kind of stereochemistry. And um, in all the cases, uh, the formal oxidation state of iridium increases to uh, 3, and uh, you got uh, uh, 18 electron uh, complex as the reaction product. Uh, to verify that, we can uh, count uh, the electrons in uh, one of the complexes, let's say the hydrogen uh, complex. Um, so iridium is group uh, 9, uh, and the two hydrogens are X-type, um, and chlorine is X-type, so you have three one-electron donors and three uh, two-electron donors, so 9 plus 6 
plus 3, uh, that's a total of 18. Uh, if you look at the reaction, uh, the reagent, uh, iridium against 9 uh, plus chlorine, that's one electron donor, and uh, you have three, uh, two electron donors, uh, so that's a total of 16. All right, uh, the next slide shows uh, three types of reactions, 1-1 uh, one, one insertion, 1-2 one, insertion, and beta elimination. Um, so in this group, 1-2 uh, insertion and beta elimination are uh, basically uh, the, uh, the same kind of uh, forward and backward reaction that we have discussed in the uh, previous slide. 1-1 uh, one, one insertion and 1-2 insertion are differentiated by uh, where the insertion um, happens. Okay. In a 1-1 one, one insertion uh, reaction, you have a uh, metal complex, and uh, uh, here you have a metal methyl uh, connection, and that uh, metal carbon bond is uh, broken. And the two parts, uh, the metal, the manganese, and also the methyl group, uh, both add to the carbonyl, and they both add to the same atom. So if you uh, uh, think about the labeling of this uh, carbonyl, uh, carbon atom will be labeled as uh, atom number one, oxygen will be number two. In this case, both addition <coughs> happens on the same carbon atom, so that's called one, one insertion. Okay. Compare that to the uh, with the next example. Here you have a cobalt complex, and there's a cobalt hydrogen bond. That bond breaks, and the two fragments, the metal part and the hydrogen, add to um, uh, uh, fluorinated ethylene. In this case, the addition happens on two carbon atoms. Uh, one fragment adds to carbon number one, another fragment adds to the carbon number two. So that's why it's called one-two insertion. The backward reaction of 1-2 insertion is called beta elimination. Uh, in this case, um, the numbering is slightly different. Instead of using numbers, we use uh, alpha and beta. Alpha is usually designated as the carbon atom closest to the metal center, and beta would be the next covering line. So uh, in this case, the beta elimination would be uh, the elimination of hydride or hydrogen atom from uh, the beta carbon atom. Uh, so uh, the example shown here shows that the metal uh, uh, grabs a hydrogen atom from the beta carbon and um, converts the ethyl group into an ethylene. Uh, and uh, the ethylene now coordinates to the metal center using its pi system instead of being a sigma donor. Uh, in the <coughs> one one insertion and one two insertion case, um, if the ligands, if the uh, ligands being inserted were uh, originally not coordinate to the metal, in those cases uh, there should not be any change of electron counting. So you can uh, see this in the first two reactions. In the one one insertion, for example, the manganese complex um, start with uh, eighteen electron count. So manganese is column seven, methyl group is uh, one electron donor, and there are four. Uh, I'm sorry, there are five uh, uh, carbonyls, uh, all being two electron donors. So you have a total of 7 plus 1 plus 10, so that's 18 electrons. Now you do the same kind of electron counting, and you end up um, with 18 electrons for the product as well. Uh, same thing can be said for the, uh, for the cobalt complex, and you see uh, the, the result of the 1-2 insertion is the um, replacement of hydride ligand with this uh, uh, alkyl ligand. So uh, that does not change the total electron count because both hydride and alkyl groups are one electron donors. However, uh, if the ligand being inserted was part of the, uh, become, was part of the metal complex uh, coordination sphere, then in that case, there will be a change of uh, electron counting. So you can see that in the beta elimination case, now, in this case, the reverse reaction would be a 1-2 insertion, okay? except in this case, the ligand, uh, the ethylene molecule, was initially coordinated to the metal. And uh, so as a result of this, uh, you do see a change 
of uh, electron counting uh, from, in this case, from 16 to 18 electron as a result of the beta elimination process. And um, I should remind you uh, that even though it may uh, appear that elimination should reduce the electron counting, that's not the case, actually, because uh, the uh, because the uh, uh, the increase in the number of ligands as a result of the beta elimination, uh, the electron count actually increases in this case. All right, now let's look at a couple of uh, uh, examples of catalytic cycle that utilize those uh, reactions we have discussed. Uh, the first one I'm showing here is the uh, palladium catalyzed cross coupling. Uh, there are many such examples, and the, uh, the particular example I'm showing here is the heck coupling. Uh, this is one of the um, recent Nobel Prize uh, uh, winning chemistries. Um, it was developed back in the 70s and 80s. Um, it's, uh, way to couple to form carbon carbon bond using uh, uh, alkyl bromide or uh, aldehyde uh, with uh, alkane uh, and the result is the formation of a new carbon carbon bond and the elimination of hbr in this case the catalytic cycle of this process is shown on the right uh, it starts uh, from the top middle um, the palladium uh, phosphine complex um, with a uh, 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 formerly zero oxidation state of palladium. It then undergoes oxidative addition uh, with the uh, phenyl bromide reagent. So here the carbon bromine bond breaks and the two parts of the complex, uh, the two parts of the reagent, the phenyl and the bromine, both add to the palladium center. And in the next step, in, uh, the complex incorporates the other reagent, uh, the, alky, uh, the alkene part, uh, the alkane uses this uh, pi electron to form a pi metal complex. Uh, in the next step, it undergoes uh, one two insertion. So what happens here is the palladium phenyl group, uh, the palladium carbon bond um, breaks down, and the phenyl part adds to one of the carbon atoms of the double bond, and the palladium part adds to the other carbon atom of the double bond. Uh, the result of this 1-2 insertion is a uh, uh, palladium sigma uh, complex shown on the bottom of the catalytic cycle. Now this step is the uh, step that the uh, new carbon-carbon bond is produced. Uh, basically it's produced through this 1-2 insertion process. Uh, in the next step, the palladium sigma complex uh, undergoes beta elimination. Uh, so what happens here is that the palladium atom abstracts a uh, hydrogen atom on the beta carbon and that reproduced uh, the uh, uh, pi complex except in this case the pi ligand already has the phenyl group attached to one of its carbons. The pi complex can uh, release the, the pi ligand uh, that will be the uh, reaction product. Uh, the remaining four coordinated palladium complex then undergoes uh, reductive elimination uh, the driving force here is the presence of a base uh, that is added as another reaction, uh, an, another reagent, uh, not shown in the overall reaction on the left. Uh, the base um, neutralizes the HBr uh, and regenerates the palladium zero complex, uh, and uh, that closes the catalytic cycle. All right, uh, as an exercise, I'd like you to uh, calculate uh, the number of valence shell electrons for all the compl uh, palladium complexes shown on this catalytic cycle. Uh, you should uh, pause this video and uh, spend about uh, two or three minutes um, uh, do the electron count uh, and uh, when, when you are done you can resume the video and uh, you can compare your result with mine. All right, uh, so shown here are my calculations. Um, you start with a 14 electron count. Palladium is uh, group 10, and the two phosphines each are two electron donors, so you have a total of 14. After oxidative addition, you should increase the uh, electron count by two, so you have 16. Uh, after addition of another pi ligand, you should have 18, because uh, each pi ligand, uh, each double bond is a two electron donor. 
uh, after one two insertion um, because the uh, uh, the ligand was originally part of the uh, complex um, the insertion actually reduces uh, the electron count so that gives you 16 and after beta elimination it increases electron count very counterintuitive here to 18 and uh, the release of ligand produce 16 comp uh, electron complex and the first reductive elimination produce uh, 14 electron com com uh, complex which is uh, the initial complex form uh, in the next example uh, we're going to look at hydrogen deuterium exchange. Uh, the overall reaction is shown on the left. Uh, here you have uh, a regular uh, uh, benzene. It undergoes reaction with uh, D2 uh, to produce deuterated benzene. The reaction involves a tantalum complex that has two CP ligands uh, and three hydrogen uh, ligands uh, shown on the top. Uh, right. It undergoes reductive elimination to uh, release a hydrogen molecule, uh, producing a monohydride complex, and then going down, adding a, a phenol, uh, adding a benzene ring. Uh, this is a, a oxidative addition process. Basically, you break the hydrogen carbon bond in the benzene and add the phenol ring and the hydrogen to the tantalum center. So that's oxidative addition. After that, uh, you get the complex shown on the bottom right. It then undergoes reductive elimination, rele uh, releasing a hydrogen uh, molecule, uh, producing uh, the monophenol complex uh, with uh, two CP uh, ligands. It then undergoes another oxidative addition. So basically, you're exchanging the two hydrogen atoms on the complex with two deuterium uh, 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 atoms. And finally, uh, the deuterated complex undergoes reductive elimination, but in this case, uh, the phenol ren um, is uh, bonded with a deuterium atom instead of a hydrogen, and that reproduces uh, uh, the tantalum complex uh, we used in the beginning of the catalytic cycle. And um, it exchanged one hydrogen atom on the benzene with one deuterium atom. So imagine if this cycle goes again and again, you will gradually exchange all the hydrogen atoms on the, uh, on the benzene with deuterium. Uh, as before, I'd like you to run the electron count. Um, I'll give you another minute or two. Uh, so pause the video for now. When you're done, um, uh, resume the video and uh, compare your uh, electron counts with mine. All right, uh, so here are the answers. Uh, the initial complex is six, uh, 18 electron complex. After reductive elimination, uh, you get 16 electron count. After oxidative addition, you get 18 again. Uh, after reductive elimination of hydrogen molecule, you got 16 on the shown on the bottom left. And oxidative addition with deuterium, you got 18. Uh, reductive elimination with, uh, of deuterated benzene uh, gets you back to 16. Uh, the last uh, process I want to uh, discuss with you is the ziegler nada polymerization process. Uh, this chemistry was developed in the 1950s uh, for the polymerization of ethylene and propylene. Um, this is now still used in industry at a very large scale and produce many, many kinds of polymers we use today. Uh, it also won Nobel Prize in the, I believe, in the 1960s. Uh, this process, unlike the ones we discussed in the previous two cases, is uh, not a homogeneous uh, uh, catalytic process. Homogeneous means solution phase. This is a so-called heterogeneous catalytic process in that you have a solid state particle uh, ca catalyst uh, reacting with molecules in solution. So there's the reaction happens on the solid liquid interface. Uh, the catalyst people use is a mixture of titanium tetrachloride and uh, triethyl aluminum. Uh, the process is shown here in those uh, three steps. This is an uh, oversimplified process, um, obviously. In the pro first process, the titanium uh, 
uh, catalyst, uh, again, this is a solid state particle. So on the surface, certain titanium centers uh, have only five coordination instead of six um, due to the uh, loss of ligand on the surface. Uh, it undergoes ligand exchange with uh, triethyl aluminum, um, producing an uh, uh, ethyl coordinated titanium center. Uh, now you notice there's uh, still a vacancy on this titanium center. Uh, the titanium complex is still five coordinated. Uh, the vacancy is shown as uh, empty square. Uh, now this complex, because it has vacancy, it can accept another ligand from solution. Uh, in this case, it's the uh, F uh, propylene molecule from solution. And that produces the pi complex, uh, the complex number one. Uh, the complex number one can undergo internal reorganization. Uh, basically what happens is the uh, migration of ethyl group uh, onto uh, one of the carbon, double bond carbon atoms uh, of the propylene molecule. So this process converts the pi complex into a sigma complex, uh, which is uh, complex number two. Uh, so basically uh, you have two uh, processes going on here the addition of propylene molecule and then the migration of an alkyl group, uh, ligand on the metal. Uh, so this process can repeat itself shown on the bottom of the slide. And uh, this is basically the polymerization of propylene uh, happening on the titanium center. And the end product of this process is the polymerization of propylene into polypropylene. Uh, as a final exercise, um, I'd like you to think about the conversion from molecule 1 to molecule 2. Okay? And I'd like you to uh, think about what kind of reaction is this? Um, is this oxidative addition, reductive elimination? Is this 1-1 insertion or 1-2 insertion or beta elimination? Um, think about uh, the change of bonding. Give yourself about a minute, and when you have made your choice, uh, you can resume the video. All right, uh, the answer is this is a one-two insertion process. Um, so if you think about what happened here, is, uh, is this is the breaking of the ethyl titanium bond, and the ethyl group adds to one of the uh, uh, carbon, uh, I'm sorry, the double bond carbon and the titanium adds to uh, the other uh, double bond carbon. So it adds to carbon one and carbon two. So this is a one, two insertion. All right, so that will conclude uh, our uh, lecture today. Um, uh, later today, I'll be posting uh, uh, on the course web additional exercises and uh, on Wednesday, we're going to go over additional um, problems together, and we're going to uh, go over additional catalytic cycles. All right. Thank you, and see you on Wednesday.